What's going on, guys? Welcome back. My name is Dustin. And last time we were here, what we did is we gave our world some colliders so that we can actually interact with everything. We put a circle collider on our player, and then we also put a uh, tile map collider and composite collider on our objects. So now we can run into um, all of these bushes and hedges and buildings and whatever else we want to be able to collide with. Um, in this video, I want to fix a couple of things that are kind of bugging me. Um, one of which is, while I'm walking here, um, it's kind of hard to see, but um, it the camera movement, it's kind of jerky a little bit. It, it's, not, it's just not as smooth as I want it to be. Um, and the reason for that is, is if we go into our camera controller script, um, so we're calling, so when our camera is moving, we're calling this in our update function. Um, and the issue with that is with moving the camera is, so this is trying to be called at the same time as our movement is being called in our update. And it's being called once per frame, but with both of them being, with both of the code being called at the same time, Unity, or it's not really sure what to do first. So you get this kind of like jerky um, effect going on. And it's just not super smooth and it just kind of looks like crap sometimes. So. The way we can fix that is if we go back into our camera controller script, we can just change this from update to late update. And what that does is it late update is still called once per frame, but it is called after um, the update function. So it's going to call everything here in this code first, every frame, and in the same frame after it, it's going to call this right here. So if we go ahead and save that and go back into Unity, and it's really just a subtle difference, but it's just enough to just make it kind of annoying. Um, you'll notice that it's a lot smoother now and it doesn't quite jerk as much. So um, another thing that I wanted to do is also with our camera as well. Um, so as the way it is right now, our camera is directly following our player. Um, and that's fine and everything, but I want to give it a little bit more of an effect. I want to make it a little bit more lifelike. So what I want to do is make it so that the camera kind of, when you move, it falls behind the player just a little bit. And then when you stop, it catches back up with the player in whatever direction we're moving. So the way we can do that is if we go back into our camera controller script, um, I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out here. Um, and then I want to create one more variable up here. I'm going to say public, public float smoothing like that. And now the way I want to do this is down here underneath here in our late update, I want to say if our transform dot position is not equal to our target's position, then I want to set our transform dot position is equal to a vector three dot lerp. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna gradually bring it to wherever we decide to put our transform position at. So what this is gonna ask for, it's gonna ask for two vector threes and a float. Basically it's asking our um, starting position, it is asking for um, our ending position, and then basically what speed we want to use. Um, so 
if we say vector3.lerp, we want to go from our transform.position, and then we want to go to our target.transform.position, and then I want to go at the speed of smoothing, just like that. So now when we created it up here to follow our player, we realized that we didn't want to go to our entire target's position on the X, Y, and Z. We just wanted to do it on our X and Y, and then stay at our current transform. If we set where we want to go to, to directly our target our target's position, it's going to give the entire transform, including this z-axis, which is not what we want. So right above here, I'm going to create a variable within our if check, and it's going to be a new vector 3, or just a vector 3. We're going to call this target position is equal to a new vector 3 and our target's position is going to be target.position.x target.position.y and our transform.position.z just like that. And then instead of calling just the target transform position, we want to just call the variable of target position. Just like that. So if we go ahead and save this now, go back into Unity, wait for it to compile and hit play. Um, it's not moving. Oh, you know something? We did not set our smoothing variable at all on our camera, and it is set to zero. So let's go ahead and just set this to one and see what this looks like. So if we hit play, uh, it looks like it's just following it. So let's set this a little bit lower too. Um, maybe 0 0.5. Uh, you can kind of see it, maybe lower than that. We have to have this really low. 0.1. There we go, that's a lot better. So you'll see that the camera is kind of dragging behind our player, and then it catches up to our player. So, and I just like the look of it. Um, I don't like it when there's a lot of drag behind it, um, but I like a little bit. It kind of just livens up our game just a little bit more. So, now there's one more quick fix that I want to make, um, and that is if we're moving one direction, we're going at a certain speed. But if we're moving in a diagonal direction, uh, we're moving a lot faster. And that's, I, I don't like that at all. So the way we can fix that is also a really simple fix. If we go into our player controller script where we're moving at, let's see, we are setting our velocity here to these uh, horizontal and vertical axis. What I want to do is I want to multiply, or not multiply, I want to set this entire vector2 section, I want to say dot normalized. And I want to use normalized with a small uh, n instead of this normalize up here. So if I just do dot normalized, that on its own will fix our issue. And what it means by normalizing the vector, I'm going to go ahead and save this right here. And I think the 
easiest way to explain this is if we go into our animator and we can just open up any of these blend either of these blend trees. So if you look at this as if um so our speed is going to be set to one when we're moving up, our speed is going to be setting to one when we're moving out or to the right. But if we hold both of these here, our speed will go up here to right around 1.5, and it makes it just a little bit faster. Um, basically what normalizing it will do is it'll set it so that all of these are, I guess I would say more in a circle, like this. And then no matter what direction we are going, we will be moving at the same speed. Um, in every direction. So I'm just gonna undo all of that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And now you will see that when we move in a diagonal direction, we're moving at relatively the same speed, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Perfect. So I think that's going to do that for this video. Um, feel free to like and subscribe down below. Please like and subscribe down below. Um, make sure to leave a comment down below as well. Um, let me know if you're liking the video or not. Let me know what I could possibly do better. Any suggestions you have for future videos, I am more than open to, and I will try and open, or I will try and implement as much of that as I possibly can. But for now, I will see you next time.